It's no secret that ChatGPT is pretty impressive, but can it actually teach you to code entirely on its own? Well, today I'm gonna put that to the test. Using just ChatGPT, I'm gonna attempt to learn the C programming language. Now, even though I do have some experience programming, I'm gonna act like a complete beginner and I'm only gonna do exactly what ChatGPT tells me. To be honest with you, I have no idea how this is gonna go, so stick around to find out. Now, let's just be honest here. If you wanna attempt this on your own, you're gonna to need to know a bit about how ChatGPT actually works. Now, fortunately, HubSpot has a great free resource called Using ChatGPT at Work, which breaks down exactly how to use ChatGPT as effectively as possible. It's a bundle that gives you a comprehensive overview of how the tool works. It also gives you some best practices and expert insights. Now, I've left a link to it in the description. You could check it out completely for free. This guide contains a decision flowchart, templates for setting clear guidelines, an AI-generated content refinement guide, and even an AI adoption checklist. It really breaks down how to best utilize this tool and make the most of its capabilities to increase your efficiency and your processes. And if that wasn't enough, there's over a hundred prompts that you can start using immediately. Personally, my favorite part of this resource is the guide that shows you how to supercharge your workday with ChatGPT, which is a game changer for daily productivity. This resource and tons of others are provided for free by HubSpot. A massive thank you to them for making all of this available and for sponsoring today's video. So first things first, we're gonna need some kind of plan or roadmap. I don't really know anything about C or how you're supposed to learn it. So let's see if ChatGPT can help us with that. Okay, so I just asked it, hey, I'm looking to learn the C programming language, act as though I'm a complete beginner and give me a roadmap or a guide on how I can learn this language. So this is pretty straightforward, but let's see what it gives us for this. And I want kind of my goal for this video to be to create an entire project using C. And again, I'm just gonna do whatever ChatGPT tells me. I'm gonna act as though I'm a beginner and I'm just gonna follow along with all of its instructions and see if with good prompting, it will actually get me in the right direction and we can kind of achieve that goal. So it's given me a bit of a roadmap here, but as I'm reading through this, it's extremely vague. For example, you know, what is programming, basic computer architecture, how computers understand and run programs. I mean, I don't know if we really need to learn that to understand C. I install a C compiler. Okay, that's good. It's giving me a few options here, but it doesn't say how I'm able to write, compile, use the compiler, what a compiler is learn the syntax and basic concepts. Okay, I guess that's good. Dive into more complex topics. Overall, it's super, super vague and it's not really giving me any actionable things to actually do. So I'm gonna try again and ask it to adjust it to kind of like a checklist of topics. So I have something a little bit better to follow along with because right now, if I was a complete beginner and I just had this, I would already be pretty lost. All right, so I just asked it to revise this and give me a list of topics and some logical orders so then I can kind of follow along with those step by step. I think that's a little bit easier and then we can just tackle each step at a time. So let's get it to finish this list here and then we can start learning these in this order. All right, so that is a much better list here. And what I've done is I've just taken it and put it here in a Google Doc just so it's a bit easier for me to follow along and keep track of my progress. So what I'm gonna do is just go through this step by step. Let's begin by seeing if ChatGPT can show me how to accurately set up a C compiler and how to use that and kind of get started on my computer. Okay, so next step, we're gonna get set up with our C programming environment. So I just asked it to walk me through that and assume that I'm a complete beginner. Now it tells me there's different steps, Windows, Mac, etc. On Mac, it says open the terminal, type this, follow the on-screen instructions. So let's copy this command here. Now we'll assume that we already know how to open the terminal, but if you're a complete beginner, you may not even know how to do that or what the terminal is. However, I'll bring the terminal open on the right side of my screen. Let's paste that in and move this to the left. And let's see what we get. It says Xcode select error, command line tools are already installed. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and ask ChatGPT what to do about that, because if I was a beginner, I may not actually know. And also I'm assuming that for this command to work, you need Xcode to be installed, which I already have installed. If you didn't have it installed, I think this probably wouldn't work and already you would be stuck. So I'll just say, hey, I'm getting this error in the terminal. Can you help me? 
Okay, so let's see what it says about this. So it pretty much told me here that this is good news because it means I already have them installed. So I'm gonna skip the rest of the steps here. But the fact that it's giving me all these new commands, again, that could be confusing for a beginner who might just wanna copy and paste everything that's inside of here. Anyways, I know that these are already working, so that's fine. So let's move on to step two, which says choose and set up a text editor or IDE. So it says VS Code, go to Visual Studio Code website and download the installer. Okay, I've already done that. Run the installer and then install the extension. So let's open up VS Code and install that extension. So VS Code is open here. Obviously, I know how to use this, but as a complete beginner, I would assume that you would have no idea what this tool is, how you use it, or even what an extension is or how to install that. So let's ask ChatGPT how to install the extension. How do I install the C, C plus extension in VS Code? Remember, I've never used this before. Well, let's see what it gives us with that. All right, so fortunately it's given me some pretty good instructions here and it tells me how to access the extension view and then to search for this extension. So let's go ahead and do that. C slash C plus plus. Okay, by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and install that. So the extension is installed. Let's go on to the next step here, which is to write, compile, and run a simple program. So we're gonna create a new file. Let's assume that we can figure that out. So let's go here and make a new file. We're gonna save this as hello.c. Okay, I'll just replace, I was doing this before. Let's copy this code and paste it inside of here. So now it says to compile our program, we're gonna to need to open up the terminal and we're gonna type the following command. So Mac OS, okay, let's copy that. Now I'm going to go through this as if I know how this works, but I know for many beginners, first of all, they're not going to understand you actually need to save this file, which I just did. They're not going to know how to open or create a new file, and they're not going to know how to open up the terminal or the command prompt within VS Code or navigate to the correct directory. So it's skipping over a ton of different steps for the purpose of this video and not to drag it on. I'll just go with how I know how to actually do it. But for 90% of people that are just starting out, there's no way they're going to be able to follow this uh, without some more detailed instruction or knowing to ask ask the right questions. So anyways, let's type this here and see if that actually works. Okay, so it looks like it did. However, I didn't get any output. So what does it say here? Run your program after the compilation type dot slash hello. Okay, and are we gonna get some output here? We did, we got hello world. Okay, so step one is complete. We've been able to write our first program. So let's check that one off the list here. Let me just make this green and let's move on to step number two. All right, so as we move on to step two here, I'm realizing there's gonna be a lot of prompts and a lot of output. So in the nature of not boring you, I'm gonna fast forward through quite a bit of this, go through these steps on my own, and we'll see how far I can get without any significant issues. So I've got to a point here where I'm asking it about operators and already I'm noticing a huge issue that I think I'm gonna keep running into as I go through this. So I've just asked it to explain to me the basic operators, which was this step in my roadmap. And as I've done that here, it started throwing me a bunch of code that I've never seen before. And it's not really building upon what we had before. For example, now we're doing a comma, so like multiple variables in the same line. It doesn't explain that, I'm not sure what that is. We're doing a declaration without actually assigning a value. And now we're even using if statements and we're evaluating the results of different conditions. And it hasn't talked about that at all. So yeah, it's intuitive, I guess, what's going on. But as a complete beginner, I have so many questions. I guess I could ask ChatGPT that, but ideally it shouldn't be showing me a bunch of code that I've never seen before already so early in my journey. So we've moved over here to scanf and getting user input. However, I keep running into the same issue with ChatGPT where it's throwing a lot of stuff at me that it hasn't explained at all. For example, we're looking at character arrays, which I guess in C are strings. I don't even know because it hasn't explained that. We're looking at using this ampersand, which is getting the pointer or the address of this variable. Now I've asked it some questions about that, but the same issue keeps popping up where it keeps throwing really complex explanations using a ton of terms that I just know many beginners wouldn't understand. 
Obviously, I can understand most of this because I know how to code already, but even some of the things it's mentioning to me, an experienced programmer, are quite confusing and really overwhelming. So I'm gonna change my prompt style a little bit and see if I can get it to give me kind of little snippets of information so I can work through it a bit slower and not get overwhelmed with so much code. All right, so I've adjusted my prompting style a bit and I've told it to really focus on giving me bits of information and then asking me if I understand it before we proceed. Now it's kind of done that and it's definitely doing a better job now and let me show you kind of the output that I'm getting. So it gives me a small bit of information, quick example, a little bit of an explanation, and then it tells me, okay, try this, so some kind of exercise, which is definitely better than what we had before. And then it also asks me if it's good and if we can move forward to the next step. Now, I don't like the fact that it just automatically gives the next piece of information. I'm sure I can tell it not to do that, but at least it's giving me little logical sections that I can read and approach at once. This is significantly better than what I had before. What I'm realizing already is that you have to be really, really detailed with the way you ask ChatGPT. And even within a lot of these explanations, for example, we get into things like a switch statement. It talks about a fall through. So where's that? Yeah, from falling through the next case, but it doesn't explain what that is. So in any time you see information that hasn't yet been explained, you have to ask it to elaborate, which is what I did with the switch statement. So explain fall through, and then it will give you a really good explanation, but you can't really rely on it to explain all little details details you would need to understand to get good at programming. So just to give you a quick update on my progress here, I've made it all the way up to recursion. So I've just learned about functions, now I'm doing recursion. Honestly, I don't love the order in which it's giving me all these things. This is not how I would teach this if I was gonna teach to complete beginners, but we're using ChatGPT and we're following along with what it says. So we've just written a Fibonacci function. We just looked at, what was the other one it showed us? Um, calculating a factorial. It's getting us into even some algorithm type stuff already before we even understand things like arrays or other components within programming, but we're following along with it. So let's see how far we get. So another small note for you guys, I'm looking at preprocessor directives, which to me seems like a pretty complicated thing quite early in my learning. Uh, anyways, as I've gone through here, it's shown me a few examples, for example, like using this if, elif, else. So I just assumed, okay, I can just, you know, throw this outside of my program, right? Like I can just put it up here and say if debug, print something out, but that started giving me an error. So ChatGPT was able to fix that error for me. It told me why I was getting that issue. But what I'm really noticing is that it's not being very specific and it's not explaining any prerequisites where I need to put the code. It's just kind of assuming that I'm gonna figure it out. So in this area where this is something that I've actually never seen before and never used it, already I was a little bit confused on where I use this, why I use it, how I would actually end up using it. Yeah, I can figure it out, but it's taking me a little bit longer just because it's kind of misguiding me or giving me some information that's not really in the correct context. So it's been a few hours now. I've been messing with C. I've been learning with ChatGPT. I did some exercises. I did a few mini projects and I feel somewhat comfortable with the language. I've learned some of the new features like the preprocessor directives, structures, dynamic memory address allocation, macros, all those kinds of things. However, the order in which I was taught it was definitely very strange. And I had a lot of uh, kind of bumps and issues while I was trying to learn these topics. So at this point, what I wanna do is share with you what worked well here, what didn't work at all, and what my tips and general advice is for using ChatGPT to learn a language or to learn really any programming concept. So first of all, let's just get this out of the way. The only reason I was somewhat successful here and could learn even some of these new C features is because I already know how to program. I'm a very experienced developer. I've worked in many different programming languages. I've seen a lot of these features before, or at least similar features with different maybe syntax. And that's why I was able to pretty quickly learn a lot of these new topics. 
However, I can tell you as someone who teaches a lot of beginner programmers, this skips so many prerequisites, assumes so much knowledge and really very quickly jumps you into a lot of advanced topics without obviously knowing if you understand them or even breaking down the fundamental concepts that allow you to understand those. So yes, for me, this was okay. For someone who's an experienced developer, sure you can learn in this format, but if you're a complete beginner and you're using something like ChatGPT, there's no chance that you're gonna be able to pick up everything you need to actually move on to those more advanced topics and not get overwhelmed and confused. Now, with all that in mind, let me share with you what I think this is actually really good at. So the first advantage that I found is that this is extremely fast. I don't think I've ever learned stuff as quickly as using something like ChatGPT. And that's simply because I'm already experienced enough that I don't need like a long drawn out explanation. I don't need to watch a whole video or a long tutorial series. I can just instantly ask a question and get the answer very, very fast. So that's the first thing that I appreciate it. It's just super quick. It spits out anything that I want immediately. And it's a single source that I'm using. I don't need to go and look at all these different resources online. I don't need to find a really good course or curriculum. I don't need to scan through documentation. And with that in mind, even if it doesn't give me what I'm looking for right away, I know how to adjust the prompt in the question to get what I want. So I can ask it to give me a different example, to give me a code snippet to copy in, to walk through the code line by line. If I have a question or a doubt, there's an area that I don't understand, I can immediately have that solved and have a new explanation or a new example. Whereas if I was using something like a course or documentation, whatever's there is all that I have access to. Yes, I can go search for something else, but that's gonna take me quite a bit longer and jumping between 10, 15, 20 different resources just isn't efficient. And it's gonna kind of lead you along like a path where you're just going back and forth, zigzagging and finding all different kinds of information from all different kinds of people. So that's what I really appreciated here, just the speed at which I can get information. All I have to do is just come up with a decent question and then I can really focus in on one area and get any doubt or question I have answered immediately. Now with that in mind, let's talk about all of the negatives. So if you are someone who doesn't really know where to start, you don't already have a curriculum or a roadmap, and you go to ChatGPT, you're gonna be brought in so many different directions, and it's not really going to guide you very well on what you should learn and in what order. We saw already here that I asked it for two different versions of a roadmap for learning C. They had some good topics, but the order was really weird. It's not an order that I personally would ever recommend for learning a language. It was showing me some advanced features after I just learned about if statements or uh, functions, for example. We're getting into recursion before we even talk about arrays or strings, or we've even written a sample program. It's showing me memory address pointers and all of these advanced features and assuming that I know them when I've never even written code before, at least that's what I was trying to simulate. So it's just a really backwards order and kind of a weird way of going through things. And you can't rely on that being a good curriculum. I think for me, that was the biggest realization is that yes, it's giving me something that seems good in the moment, but if I was someone who's never done this before, I wouldn't really want to rely lie on this and I wouldn't know if it was actually guiding me in the correct direction. So it's one of those things where it kind of speaks with complete confidence, says, yeah, this is what you need to do. So it seems like the right thing, but when you know better, you realize that you can't rely on a lot of the information that's being provided to you. So with that in mind, what you would really need to do is go find some curriculum that's solid, that's vetted, that a lot of people have followed through with or from a reputable source take that and then use that to kind of guide your journey in ChatGPT where you could focus in on more specific topics. Now, even within these topics though, what I realized is that ChatGPT is very bad when it comes to assuming knowledge. Even when I explicitly told it to treat me like a complete beginner that had no prior experience, it still assumed that I had software installed, that I knew how to navigate my computer, that I knew what different programs were, I knew how to save files, open files, how to get to the terminal. There's just all these different things that you might not think about now as an experienced developer. But when you're starting out, there are huge roadblocks and they're really frustrating. So overall, the biggest issues I found is that it can be really vague if you don't direct it exactly on what you want. It really assumes quite a bit of knowledge that you may or may not actually know, and you can't really rely on all the information it's giving you. Most of the time, what it shared was correct, but there was a lot of examples that were either misguided, not in context, difficult to follow along with, or they relied on some previous knowledge that I didn't have. So with all of that said, let me give you a suggestion on how to use ChatGPT more effectively if you are learning something. First of all, don't rely on this as your primary source of information. 
get some kind of video course. Obviously, I have a bunch. I have one with course careers you guys can check out where I have a bunch of free ones on my channel. Go to some kind of documentation. Just find a reputable resource where you know the person teaching it is actually good at teaching, has experience with it, and isn't going to skip over fundamental topics. Use that as your primary source of information where you learn the core concepts and you know that nothing critical is going to be skipped over. Now, while you're going through that, have ChatGPT open maybe on another window and a different monitor and use it as a personal tutor and something to really quickly give you feedback and answer questions that maybe aren't covered by some kind of asynchronous course, for example, right? If you're watching a video of mine, you might have a question I don't cover. That's where ChatGPT comes in, where you can really have a focused discussion and a focused answer on one very fine grained thing. You don't want to go to ChatGPT and say, hey, teach me for loops. It might be able to do that, but it's just really unreliable and you're going to be brought in all different kinds of directions. Whereas if you can go in there and say, hey, here's my code. It's not working. Can you help me with that? That's a lot more of a detailed answer and something ChatGPT is quite better at doing. So with that said, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.